Coffee and Dev, where you basically get better every day over a cup of joe. Today, we are going to be covering interviews, and this is the co-op edition because I want to cover other ones in the future, and I think it's just important to narrow our scope. And I thought this was a good talk, considering there are a lot of co-ops currently interviewing. So research the company. You will be surprised how few people do this. They will come to the interview. They will just be ready on a technical level, but they won't have um, done any sort of research. So you should go through the product. You should have prior to actually interviewing on a technical level or a hiring manager level, you should have already gone through the steps with HR of, you know, what is this company about? What are the cultural values? Um, do you know the team I'm going to be placed on? What's the team working on? And it shows engagement. So this is going to make you stand out more than other candidates who don't ask this. As a co-op, don't be, or even just a junior dev, like you need to leverage as much as you can to get ahead. Uh, I always say to people who are new, especially as co-ops, and especially if they haven't had prior experience or doing anything else, you need the leg up. You need to find some sort of thing that's going to make you stand out. And one of the easiest things that you can do prior to even going to the interview is just doing your homework. One of the secrets I will say, you should take advantage of your contact in HR before you get to the hiring manager. You should be using that to get a heads up on the expectations that you're going to walk into your interview. You're going to have um, HR recruitment reach out to you. You're going to start that process. And during that, you should kind of be asking like, hey, how do you run your interviews? Uh, what's the process like? What are the different steps? And this will give you a lot of information. It can give you information on like, oh, they're very heavy on technical portions. They're very big on cultural and I highly recommend taking uh, notes or recording these because uh, you want to reference and go back to them. Think about it. Recruitment is sitting there and telling you, hey, the position is in such and such team and the process that they do is they do um, you know, an interview followed by a technical interview where they're going to ask you about ABC. And you can prep before this. This is great. The next section is about doing mock interviews. Practice and do mock interviews. You, you want to go through these motions to get comfortable, just like public speaking, you know. Think about when you were doing a big speech before, you don't usually just wing it. You've done rehearsal and preparation, and you don't need to have like a script script of how you're going to do the interview, but you want a general idea of, okay, what are the questions I'm going to be asked? How to respond to them? Um, so you're not spending time in the interview thinking like, oh, they asked me for a time that I worked well in the team and you're like, uh, you should just have a rehearsed example of, hey, I, in the school project, worked with a team of six and we had to do blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they're going to follow up with something like, did you have any challenges? How did you resolve those challenges? And it should just be essentially muscle memory. You, you have a story, you have it rehearsed so that you're not sitting there because the other problem is you're going to be sitting there eating up all your time because you're interviewing them as well as they're interviewing you and you don't want to spend 15 minutes just going, um, let me think, like, just get a friend, get someone else who's done interviews a bunch and just go through the motions. Now, when you're in the actual interview, the key thing, especially in the co-op or early positions when this might be your first development job, is you need to have a way of showcasing your expertise. A lot of times they'll go in, there's your resume, um, you know, individual won't talk about anything they've done and they'll just be like, oh, that's me showcasing. But you need to go beyond that, especially if your interviewer has opened up the floor for you to talk. Um, like, hey, can you talk about this project I saw on this? And if you just read off what the resume says, like it, it doesn't help showcase yourself further, right? Because on the resume, you shouldn't be listing every detail, right? You want to keep it compact so someone can scan and go over and get an idea. So when someone actually says, hey, I noticed this project that you worked on implementing a TCP server, how's that work? Or what were challenges? Or what do you think of it? And you're just like, um, it was cool. And that just, that's the end of it. Like, 
you know, this isn't good showcasing. You could talk about, oh, you had to read the spec and you hadn't done it before and you found out blah, blah, blah and, and debugging it. And because it's showing that you're engaged and you're also taking this time to show the things that are more like soft skills, like that you're motivated, that you're, you, you have drive, that you're, you're obviously engaged is one of the things I'm talking about. But, you know, have something that you can showcase. And if you don't have something to showcase, then I would take a step back and find something to showcase. Even if it's just like school projects, I'd start there. Like take out an old exercise that you did and polish it up and put it on GitHub and put it on your resume as a, a project that you've worked on. So at least when the tables are turned and someone's like, hey, can you talk a little bit about your experience or can you talk about what you've been up to? Or, you know, you can talk about something and you can reference it. Hey, that TCP server on my resume, I have it up on GitHub. You know, I did in school, I, I spent the time cleaning it up. I added more tests, which weren't a part of the project. Um, so yeah, take the time to showcase your expertise. I think the biggest thing, especially at this level, is the more engaging you can be in the interview, the better off you are to standing out. At least how I interview on my co-ops is very different from my typical software developer interviews. I know that that person isn't going to have the three years of experience that I can sit down and be like, let's talk, talk about, um, you know, this architect architecture and this design and how would you design this and what's the system design level look like and things that I look for on candidates in the scenario is more so like, are they engaged in the conversation? Do they, are they going to be a good team fit? Do they have something that pushes them forward versus the other candidates? Because very rarely will I have a candidate that stands out on like a huge technical level. It's usually more something like, hey, wow, they're really paired up well on something that they find interesting and that the team is going to be doing. Um, because on the technical level, it's like, oh, they've only done a couple small projects and they're all school related. So it's not really applicable to what we do. And some of the times you pull off the projects on GitHub and you're like, oh, wow, these are a lot of bad practices in them, or this isn't ironed out for working with a team. And, you know, so I'd say the soft skills at this stage will really help you through. Now, people interview differently. There are definitely companies who are going to sit there and have a much stronger um, technical portion to this. They might sit you down and say like, hey, we're, we need you to write blah, blah, blah. So, you know, cover your bases on having some basic understanding of the fundamentals and typical questions you're gonna get. Like, hey, can you talk about some design patterns or good development practices you know of? Or, you know, can you talk about you know, even at this level, they might not even reference something like dependency injection, or it, it, it might be much more like, how would you debug a problem? And you'll just have an answer uh, to cover these very basic intro kind of style things. But when the tables turn, you want to ask these follow-up questions like, how would you troubleshoot this might be a question you get and you give an answer. And then when they turn the tables for your questions, be like, um, when you asked about troubleshooting, you know, did you feel comfortable with the answer I gave you? And if not, like, how would you approach that kind of problem? Or what, what is the practices that, you know, company X deploys to troubleshoot these? Uh, because you're continuing the conversation and it shows that you actually have legitimate interest and that you were paying attention during the interview and that you want to improve already. And you're looking for that guidance. You're looking for, Hey, I might be new to this, but, definitely with a mentor, I could level up. And, and that goes super, super far. Like, you know, going through, we'll say, we'll say hundreds. I don't know if it's hundreds at this point, but many interviews of interviewing candidates and you'll just have a lot of people who will like come in, they'll read off their resume. They'll only answer the minimum that you've asked them and that's it. And you're, you're trying to turn the tables and give them this upper hand of like, look, it's, it's your time to have this conversation. And, and, and to gauge and, and you know further what we've been talking about, um, just find something you can latch on. And you know I always suggest that people come prepared with three questions, um, regardless of the interview. Have like three things that you are just prepared to ask and follow up. It might be like something as simple on the technical side as, could you talk about modern practices that your company employs for development? 
Um, can you talk about if you guys have pair programming? Can you walk me through how I would level up working in the team that you know you're proposing me to be on? Um, and then those are more skewed to the technical, more on the company side and just general engagement. You could be asking, um, what does a win-win scenario look like? Um, and what you're trying to get at is, if this went well, is there a position at this company or is it just a co-op term or you know, is it just this contract or whatever it may be? And you're trying to get a sense of that person showing their hand like, well, what we find is, you know, our, our, our best candidates who come through this and we hire, we end up making an offer at the end. I typically always tell the people I interview as co-ops that um, I consider it a success on my part and their part if we would like to extend an offer at the end of the co-op. I feel like it's a success for both parties at the end of that where I'm like, I would gladly hire this person today. Like, you know, it wasn't we hired you and you fulfilled your co-op obligation, but I would hire you as a software developer today. And that says a lot about the company too, is that, you know, asking that is at the end of this, you know, do, how many, how many co-ops does your company hire is a good indicator of this stuff. Um, it shows that you, you would like to get hired, that that's your aim. You know, it, from your perspective of interviewing the interviewer, you're getting a sense of how much mentorship am I going to get? You know, how far are they really going to pull me up to a software developer level? If they're saying, hey, we hire most of the co-ops that come through our program as software developers, you know you're going to be positioned at the end of that in most cases to be at the level of software developer. And honestly, you know, that's kind of what you're looking for. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this gives you a leg up and, you know, don't give up and realize you will get plenty of rejections and it's all part of the process. Getting a no doesn't mean that you're not good enough. It could have been a bad day. It could have been you're not right fit. You know, it, it, you know, you might not be at the spot in your journey for that company. You have to keep going through the motions of interviewing. You have to keep pushing. And someday someone is going to give you a chance and all will go well. It gets always easier after nailing the first one and getting it um, and getting it. And that's the end. That is the uh, coffee and dev today. I, I hope you enjoyed your coffee and I hope you learned a little bit more today and keep learning.